cornucopia of colourful plants has arrived to fill the garden. I'm so in heaven. Just give me plants to play with. These native plants hail from regions all over Australia, but they'll grow in this Melbourne garden thanks to the age-old craft of grafting. The theory with that is to take plants that are difficult to grow, or from areas very different to where we want to grow them here, and put them on the roots of things that cope well in these sort of soils. Check this out. This is amazing. This is a fat bastard. That is fantastic, isn't it? Phil discovered this. Phil, what's the story about fat bastard? I don't swear much, but when I collected it, I said, geez, look at that yeah, fat that bastard. So it's naturally occurring in the wild, just an enormous flowered form. It is that. That is a sensation. It's a honker. The majority of plants are in flower, allowing Philip to play with different colour combinations. I'm completely blown away by the incredible textures and shapes of the flowers on these Australian natives. This pimelia has long, incredibly showy bracts, and then the really lacy flowers of this verticordia, or the dark, almost black red flowers on this eremophila. I think too often we think that Australian natives are florally really modest, but what we're seeing here proves otherwise. Around the pool filter, Philip is creating a fern garden and he's made a concession. Just on the edge of the window frame. An exotic amongst the natives. This is good bamboo, clumping bamboo, not the bad invasive running one. So don't freak out at home. And you can prune it too, so it doesn't get any higher, so we can create quite a lovely form. Under the shady eaves, and with increased humidity from the pool filter, these understory plants should thrive. While at the front of the house, Carl and Maria have a major alteration to the design. The key change was we swapped the, the pool or the billabong that was here for the trampoline. Right. And that was mainly because that's what our kids are doing. So that's going to change over time as well, isn't it? Absolutely. There's no way of predicting how things need to evolve. So I'm really hoping that this garden has got a real combination of what we need now and what we can have in the future as well. A large mound makes a feature of the in-ground trampoline which is accessed via stone steps. So let's get a few things um, into these little nooks and crannies. I think this looks really beautiful. Little lovely Connor Stylus. Loves rocky, well-drained spots. So that'd be perfect. The boulders are a distinctive feature throughout the garden and essential to the naturalistic design philosophy. This is a very particular form of landscaping which has a strong effect on your plant choices. The plants are all tucked into little niches like this, and the intention is just to have them running along the seams to knit the whole thing together.